Everyone tells you that you need good apology for your games, but never help you actually improve. So today I'm going to give you a stupidly simple guide that will help you improve your game models inside of Blender. Let's hop in right now. Welcome to the simplest guide to topology for games. Firstly, don't use anything other than quads. That's what a lot of people will say. If you have triangles and, and land guns, people are going to murder you. But sometimes it doesn't matter that much. So let's walk through exactly how all of this works. So topology basics. Obviously, you have quads, triangles, and end guns. So obviously, quads is four vertices, triangles are three, and end guns is five and above. So five plus. That is basically it. And let's walk you through every kind of different type and when it's going to be useful. So obviously, use quads for your main surface. Quads is just going to help in terms of like if you have a line of faces like this to subdivide them is a lot easier. So like if I go add a subdivision modifier, like being able to subdivide it into halves is a lot easier than having to do it any other way. So if you compare that to a model that has a bunch of triangles, like if you have this sort of thing, uh, blah, 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 like one of the triangles like that, if you add a subdivision modifier, it's not going to look good. It's going to end up with like vertices going along like this or something like that. And it's going to be a, a total nightmare. It might even do something like this. I don't know. Whatever. So you kind of have to think of where is going to be most useful to have quads. Okay. And tries are very useful. Flat objects where adding quads would be unnecessary. So this we'll go into a bit more later, but that's just something you've got to keep in the back of your mind. Something else that's going to be quite useful when you're modeling, like once you've learned kind of where to put everything is you'll see a lot of things like this, where it basically shows you, this is just basically a good idea to kind of refer back to if you need it, but kind of seeing how to kind of add or remove topology. So if you have a face like this with or like two faces, then you can look at a chart like this. So if you want to go from four to two or two to four, you can obviously do it either way. Uh, if you need to generate more vertices, you can kind of go just add something like this and then you can get more vertices. So basically you'll see that each kind of edge will have a flow. So you can see like this one will flow around like that. So that's kind of what you have to be mindful of. Like this three to two, you can see that there's going to be a faces that kind of flow. That is half of what topology actually is. Just how does your mesh flow and does it flow well? Okay, so we'll hop into more examples. But I mean, you can even see here, like you'll see a lot of these, these aren't like, great further down, but you'll kind of see like how does all of your faces kind of go through, through each other. So it's that sort of stuff that is important when doing your characters. So you can see a lot of stuff like this where you can see how it kind of flows and how you can kind of add, because if you didn't do this, you wouldn't have this extra vertices over here. Uh, and so all of that stuff that is very important for your topology. Okay. Let's quickly talk about how game assets are actually made. When doing game assets, usually you have a high poly and a low poly version. So you can see something like this, where you have this version, which has all the topology, blah, 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 get the good shape. Uh, it's not actually that important for this, but any of these shapes, this, this is where you kind of get it. And then you make a low poly version and you bake all of those details on in a normal map. So you can see here, this is kind of what it is. So if we have a low poly mesh like this, we can bake what's called a normal map, which is basically this blue looking image. And it adds all this extra detail in. So you can see the shading, like has this little shading here. That is the normal map. And that's where all the details come from. So it's very important to kind of uh, know when to add details in your low poly mesh and when to add details into your high poly mesh. You'll see a lot of these, like this is obviously the same model, but like if you need to have some sort of small texture on top of this mesh, is it better to just do it with a tech, uh, normal app or is it better to do it with just the topology of the actual low poly mesh? So you can see same thing here, like uh, all of this, they have a lot of kind of like ripples in all of this, even the center kind of does that, whatever. You'll see that there's not much here. Basically all it does is it does this kind of inset like that. Whereas the high poly mesh probably does kind of there and maybe has like a little kind of thing like that and then goes across and then kind of dips in, goes out, dips in. So that sort of thing. And then you can just bake that in with an old map and that's basically how it all works. Same thing over here. You can see like these bricks are all relatively flat. Not that 
the bricks kind of do this, but all of the bricks overall are kind of flat. So you can just have this low poly mesh and then just the bricks that kind of stay out or like poke out. So you can see this one over here, that's one that should be done or this one that goes like inserted in. So those are the ones that actually have to be added in to the low poly mesh as you see here. And as you'll see, a lot of game ready meshes do get triangulized uh, or triangulated. And the reason is basically just because a face can be not flat. And the reason is, so if you have a face like this, that's flat. But then if you suddenly have like these three points like this, and then you just have one that goes down like that, obviously this face isn't going to be flat. So if you have a triangle, every single face is going to be 100% flat. And that just helps game engines a lot to actually be able to render all of it. Cool. So that's why game engines basically just triangulate all your models. Sometimes it does it automatically uh, and sometimes people do it uh, for themselves. But if you're just looking at all these like different topology references, that's why they end up being triangulated a lot. But even in this, you can kind of see where the actual quads are um, in terms of this. You don't actually, they're not actually all going to be like triangulated um, or when modeling. By the way, if you are interested in learning how to make amazing PS1 characters inside of Blender, check the first thing in the description. This is not going to stay at this price for long. It's going to be raising soon. So if you're interested, check the first thing in the description and I'll see you there. Cool. So one tip, get rid of the edges that don't contribute to the silhouette. To an extent, just reduce the parts that are not going to be actually like contributing to it much. Okay. So you can see here, like if they have this model right here, if you wanted to have this kind of like little detail, you could simplify it, but then that's just going to kind of change how the actual shape of it all looks. And you'll see here in a lot of like these even higher poly models, like I say high poly, just in terms of these circles, like you can see they have this high poly model uh, circle, and then they just kind of use a bunch of triangles to go between each part. And the reason they do that is just because there's no point in having like to get this to actually work for the circle, you would have to have so many edges go all the way around going like up and down and that would add just a bunch of vertices that don't need to be there. And if you can get away with just doing the triangles, connecting everything together, why not? It's just, there's no point in actually adding it all of it in there. If you're going to have a flat face that doesn't do, like deform at all, there's not too much problem with actually having stuff that doesn't flow well uh, or having triangles and all of that. The main problem with having triangles and or end guns in your model is basically do your subdivisions work, do your bevels work, all of that. That's the whole point of having clean topology. So you'll see in like models like this, you can even see parts here. These just have no vertices here. And the reason is just because you don't need to have it on a flat face. But if you have a circle bit like this and you want to be able to bevel this edge, this isn't really going to work that well because you can see all these like vertices are going along like that. If you wanted to have a clean bevel on this edge, then you would actually have to have kind of a protection edge on the inside that has all the vertices going in like this. And then that's when your bevel would work because you just modifiers won't work if you have it kind of set up that way. So something like this would work so much better if you had to actually bevel that edge. And that's something you have to consider. Okay. And obviously there's a lot of ways of like, you already showed you earlier with reducing kind of vertices uh, in terms of the, like this part here, where if you have a high like resolution circle you need, you can just do the triangle into the corners. And here's where people will say something like this, like this is technically better if you need to do a bevel or something like that. But in terms of reducing, this model is not going to get changed whatsoever in terms of changing it between this one and this one. There's really not much that gets done. The only thing is that this one is probably going to react worse in terms of getting a subdivision on it. But you can also see, similar to what we talked about earlier, you can see the difference between like how many edges we have to go along all the here compared to this bottom one, probably like not the best. You'd kind of like want to join it maybe like that, maybe have another one in the center, but probably close to this, having something like that. Um, they're kind of keeping quads in there, but yeah. So if this is something that's not going to deform because like this is just going to be maybe a piece of wood, whatever, like or like a front bit of a house. If this isn't actually going to get deformed in any way like this, so like if, imagine this is the, the top view. If this isn't going to deform, there's no reason to actually care if you have it like this because 
Uh, if you have it like this and you try to bend it like on the, from the top view like this, it's going to look awful. But if you have it like there and you need to bend it, then it's actually going to, that's the time that's necessary to do that. But if you want to save verses, you can cut out so many just by doing something like this. Also, you can see here, like if you don't, if you're going to have like a high resolution on the outside of a circle like this, where you can see it's 24 uh, verses, then you don't have to have 24 going through your whole thing because like keep like a consistent size of your polygons. So if you're going to have parts that like, if you're going to have a little kind of thingy, you don't need the center of that circle to be the same resolution. So you can see here, uh, like how you can just use triangles and get it lower vertices if you are in that kind of situation. Okay, and here are a couple different examples of topology that we can break down and actually look at. So these are actually from actual games. This is Naughty Dog and this is The Last of Us Part 1, which is a actual game. And here are some wireframes of some environments. So you can see like they don't add topology and then separate stuff when it's like necessary. So you can see here these bricks out here on the side, they don't get joined into actual mesh. You could have a bunch of edges going along like this, but it's just unnecessary. These can be separated and then it works completely fine. And here you can see that exact method we just talked about is you have this curve. So you need to get some more vertices for it. So we just use a triangle like this and then even more triangles from there to get this whole thing set up and then you can get the smooth thing while having like i mean to be fair they do have quite high resolution sides but in modern games it doesn't matter as much having sort of sides like this again same thing in here this arch you can see the exact same technique being used all right and you'll see in here there's actually kind of some problems in here that would easily create some big problems if you're using a subdivision if you look at this model like at face value it looks fine but there are actually so many n-gons that could easily create some huge subdivision problems. And I'm not actually sure how this actually ended up looking clean. So you'll see here, there are a lot of edges here that like, yeah, this here's an n-gon, then there is a n-gon right here. There's an n-gon over here, here. Like there's so many n-gons in this model. It's actually crazy. Here is another one. And it's really not that necessary, like in terms of how simple this shape should be. But yeah, but that can also be prefaced with if you don't need to subdivide it. So this actually might just be the reason it looks clean is because if you don't need to subdivide it with a subdivision surface, then it might not actually be a problem. Okay, and here's another example. Uh, basically, like you can also see how models get like transferred from n-gons and what actually happens to them when you subdivide it. So you'll see here, this has an end gun in the middle and uh, like a bunch of faces around it. And you'll see how, if you subdivide it, it actually gets rid of the end gun. And you see here, now every single face in here is a quad. And you'll just see, you just have to know how it's going to react. So you see here, just look at how, what all of these kind of things, how they kind of merge into each other. So you'll see, it's kind of just this pattern of how each single kind of thing flows in and out. So... That's just this type of stuff that you have to be worried about and actually pay attention to and put it in intentionally, not just add in a random end gone for no reason. You'll see stuff like this being used a lot and you just have to look at where stuff kind of flows into each other. And another thing you have to be wary of is not to have like spirals in your topology. So you'll see in these arms that like most likely these kind of loops will go around like this. And this is important to do because if you have kind of a face that is maybe just for example, these kind of flow into this one, then you're going to cause kind of a spiral like this. And if you kind of have to select an edge and it just ends up selecting the whole arm, that's just not good because you're just going to be unable to select stuff and be able to just work with the model in general. If you need to add an edge into it, but if you just have a consistent loop going around, then if you need to add an edge loop in the middle, bam, it's done. You just go to control R, add an edge loop, and it works. So you would have to look at stuff like this where this is actually a weird decision, and I don't know why exactly they did this. So you can see here, they have this edge go here. Obviously, they have edges on each like side. And then for some reason, they decided that when this thing is going to go wider like this, to have this edge go across like that. So obviously, these two go down. But then there's this one, so that's probably going to loop around like that. And then this one is going to go like across. So, and then this one, obviously you can see that kind of goes 
like that. And you see, it's just kind of a bit of a weird thing. And this face over here is never actually going to end up like going into another one properly because this one might loop around like there and then loop up and it just ends up being a bit messy whereas if they had done this properly then you could do something like this maybe something there and just in general what, there's no point in kind of changing up this whole thing here so you could have actually just gone from here to there and then just had this face edge continue this edge continue and then just had one go down the center like that bam Okay, and then obviously you just don't have that extra vertice that they added in. So if they wanted that and had it for a reason, then you could do something more like this. So you could just go like here. Um, so you can either do it in the middle of a face. So we go there, there, have a face there, go across there. Okay, and then there you get that extra edge. And the only thing you have to do is just copy it on the other side and then that just gets localized into that if you do it on the opposite side, then they're just going to follow each other and it all works out fine. There's no point in having these kind of crisscross back and forth. One thing I will say, it's very good to protect, protect the edges of your meshes. Now, this is particularly important when using bevels, subdivisions, all of that stuff. But just in general, you can see here how like there's a big, like big gaps between the faces and it's good to have like a consistent level of gaps and then on the edges you'll see how they add in like extra edges you can see here they have one over here like kind of stuff like that it's just going to help you a lot when modeling your stuff and you can see again on all these different plates they have two edges just just a little bit of an edge just so they can kind of control everything when they subdivide it you can see every single plate does that thing Okay, and now since I know a lot of you are low poly models, obviously modelers because basically what this whole channel is about, let's actually go into some more specific examples of an actual game that was made for the PS1, I think. I'm not sure actually what game this is. So you'll see here that they have a lot of like deceptively simple topology tricks that you can use in your models as well. So right off the bat, we're just talking about like get rid of vertices that don't actually contribute to the shape and silhouette of your model. So you see here, we have a flat floor. So obviously there's no point in actually getting any vertices over here, but obviously we need some more detail for here. So we just have a simple triangle and that can just get our faces. And then instead of having to get like more edges going through to these, just add a quad over here and it works fine. Now, if you think about it, if we have some sort of like shape like this, kind of like some kind of insets, whatever, and I'll try to make this as symmetrical as possible. Um, whatever so that's the middle kind of symmetrical like obviously there's no point in adding a bunch of edge loops that run all the way down and each like kind of face that goes along kind of added in you can just go add one across just like they did here then maybe do something like this to get that uh, or you could kind of go there maybe add a triangle um, and then that kind of helps you get this one so maybe you could do something like there and then we can just go get this done and you can see here even just right off the bat, that just gives us a bunch of quads and we don't actually have to add all these edge loops going along through the floor. You can see that's just a good example there. Another thing I saw right off the bat is obviously here you can see all of this, but like here they have this kind of shape over there. Let me actually just change my pen just so you can actually see what I'm clicking doing. So we can have this sort of shape here. And obviously you could have just done there, maybe go add an edge loop along the middle and then extrude it down. But like, then you'd have to go add an edge loop through this part. You'd have to go add edge loops to that part. All of that. No point in doing that. We can just go add one quad over here, extrude that down, and have this sort of thing here that gets it going along, and we're all good. And you see how just that just instantly saves some topology from it. Actually, similar thing here. This is basically like you could have added faces going along here to get that all in, but just by simply inserting it like this kind of just localizes it to this part and makes it so that you don't have to actually add in a bunch of extra edges just for such a simple shape. Okay, another example of this is over here. You can see that like if you take similar thing to what we just said, uh, and if I go back to red, like if you take it and kind of in, like inset it like this, you can see same thing here, this whole kind of, they got like a square over here and then they just inset it so that they can kind of add in all those extra edges and stuff like that into it without having it kind of like spill over into the other parts of the model. 
once you've improved all of your game environments and your game assets, maybe a good idea to learn how to make some beautiful characters inside of Blender. So click over here to learn more about that.